The red scarf a reflection of the chilly weather outside and little warmth displayed in the chamber towards North Korea, whose representative listened to condemnation from speaker after speaker with what appeared to be studied nonchalance. The situation on the Korean Peninsula is the most tense and dangerous peace and security issue in the world today. Publicly, at least, the Council has been united in imposing an extensive series of sanctions. But the U.S. Secretary of State questions the commitment of Russia and China. Continuing to allow North Korean laborers to toil in slave-like conditions inside Russia in exchange for wages used to fund nuclear weapons programs calls into question Russia's dedication as a partner for peace. Similarly, as Chinese crude oil flows to North Korean refineries, the United States questions China's commitment to solving an issue that has serious implications for the security of its own citizens. These charges rejected by China and Russia, which insisted that the ongoing joint military exercises by the US and South Korea made any dialogue all but impossible. Two months of quiet by North Korea were answered by Washington with unprecedented military exercises and a listing on a terror funding list that leads us to question the sincerity of statements that there is a preference for a peaceful solution to the crisis. And with all eyes on him, the North Korean representative appeared nervous, his hands shaking, but also unapologetic arguing that his country has a sovereign right to protect itself against what he called U.S. aggression. Our position of nuclear weapons was an individual self-defensive measures of defending our sovereignty and the rights of existence and development from the U.S. The meeting ended with agreement on the desirability of dialogue, but division as to how to achieve it. The U.S. adamant that there has to be a unilateral freeze on nuclear testing by North Korea before any talks can be possible. Mike Hanna, Al Jazeera, United Nations.